I um, I wanted to. Um, I don't. I, I wanted to to share with you some of my thoughts. Um, as we all know, um, whether you received a no notification or uh, you saw it on the news or some of the many people in your in your social media, your Facebook or your Twitter, whatever, have have informed you, um, the U.S. Um, military has um, conducted an, an airstrike on, a, on an air base um, in Syria and um, and my uh, this is I mean this is framed as a reaction to that but um, and and and, and the, the strike is a reaction to to um, to a chemical attack that that took place in Syria on Tuesday. Um, I think most of us have seen the footage, um, extremely um, difficult footage to view. Um, I can only imagine what it was like for those who experienced it, for those families um, who, who experienced um, being attacked. Um, there are many questions, obviously, that are uh, le left open right now um, with evidence being inconclusive completely um, but the evidence that's very 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 clear is that um, innocent people perished um, and not just adults but children and if you watch those videos um, it's it's uh, gut-wrenching I, um, I watched as um, they carried children small children, toddlers, um, not even not even potty trained children. Um, and they stripped them and they hosed them down to try to get off this this odorless, um, tasteless, colorless gas, um, this chemical called sarin that um, that basically locked up their their system and had them them gasping for air. And as they washed it away, you could see some of the life go out of them. And I uh, was affected so uh, profoundly by this, um, actually, when I saw it, that I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't move. I, 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 um, I, I took the next day off of work and um, I, I hung out with my own family. I um, selfishly, um, wanted to be with them and hug them and play with them. So we went and uh, we did an activity um, at a small waterfall, which I'll show you guys later. But I, um, I, I just, I can't, I know that atrocities happen. Um, I know that this is, this is the world we live in. Um, we all grew up. Um, in the in, in the Western world, looking at very a very specific tragedy that the world ignored for a while until it couldn't be ignored by the Western powers, and that was the Germans and the Holocaust um, and the, the murder, systematic murder of, of millions of Jewish people as well as Poles and other minority groups and Russians and, and homosexuals. And this is something that I watch in black and white. This is something that. I uh, read out of history books. Um, that's the main thing that's taught to U.S. children. Of course, if you attend any class um, outside of your secondary education, then you learn about other atrocities um, that are disputed, but that evidence points to um, very real problems with the Armenian genocide um, in the 90s, the Rwandans. Um, and, and before that, with Rhodesia and these, I mean, just, just brutal, just brutal murder of and and pillage and and rape and things that are caught on TV and camera. We can't escape it. And and in 2017, we see it on TV. Um, and I got I have mixed feelings because I look at CNN and I look at Fox and I look at the BBC and I know that they're doing their job they're reporting it and we need to know because the world needs to see so the action can take place why is action just now taking place 
um, this is no uh, why, uh, this is no 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 condemnation of, of anyone it's just a general gen, genuine question um, why after after we have this video, video evidence why aren't people in the region stepping in why are the Russians so keen to back up Mr. Bashar al-Assad I, I don't know the answer to these questions um, why does the US come and have to be the one to assert that power there why are we doing it now will we do it in the future there are so many questions right now but um, my I mean just it just can't be ignored and um, I'm, I'm so heartbroken broken for those children um, who uh, won't have the opportunity in this life to grow to maturity, uh, to grow to puberty, um, to visit another country, to learn another language, to go on a date, to be married, to have children. Um, my heart is just broken because these are all the dreams that I want for my own children. Um, and, uh, and they won't have it, just like the people I read about in the history books who, um, who were robbed of that experience because of because of very evil actions of those in power and perhaps sins of omission by those who were in power and chose not to act because of the selfish interests of their own countries and um, and this is not a political statement uh, it's an observation I think self-interest drives especially in the Western world, it drives a capitalistic society, um, the self-interested individual by the virtue of being self-interested wants to get ahead and have a community that's valued um, and they produce value for that community. Um, but at what point do we, <laughs> at what point does altruism take place? And, and do we have to really call it altruism? to defend innocent life? Um, do we really have to call it altruism to stand up for what's right? And I, I mean, I don't know. I, um, I don't know what's gonna happen, but um, it's a really very crazy situation um, that is, uh, that's occurring in our world today. Um, and I can only be um, a participant, not just an observer, but I can only tell you what I see. And um, I can tell you this, that um, um, I, 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 w I want to do better for me and for my family, but I think, I believe deeply that in order for me to do better for me and my family, I have to raise my voice and I have to advocate and I have to um, take action where action can be taken to better the lives of the families of others um, and that means um, learning how to look outside of labels and outside of boxes and outside of this idea of nationality which is very very draconian it's it's old we're we live in a world society Yes, we're still led by ideologies, we're still led by uh, information, but at the end of the day, we're humans. We all have children. We all were once children. We all bleed. We all have dreams, we all have aspirations. And I don't know what's gonna happen, um, but I, 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 my thoughts, um, and, and yes, my prayers um, are on, um, focused on, those who are suffering and who lost their lives. Um, one man buried two 10-month-old twin babies of his when he went out to see what happened. His babies were fine and he came back and his babies had suffocated because of the gas. My heart breaks for them and um, my, my prayers go up to, to our God for, for them, but also my thoughts um, are on those who now are going to be affected, um, whether that be U.S. military personnel, 
um, and other civilians, um, the many Syrians who have been invested in this situation for the past seven years, um, and I guess before that, um, whether that be the Russians, whether that be the Iranians. Um, my hope, and call it a prayer, is that we can come together to some sort of some sort of peaceful agreement and recognize value in the life of all those and not just in a, in a, in a handful of individuals. And uh, I leave this very, I know it's a very somber thought, but that's what's happening right now. I leave these thoughts with you guys and um, I'll, uh, I'll catch you guys on our next video. Shoots.